The Corporate Environmental Achievement Award recognizes a single outstanding environmental achievement made by an American Ceramic Society corporate partner in the field of ceramics. This year, Central Glass and Ceramics Research Institute, Kersha Center, receives the award. Dr. Lalit Sharma is accepting the award on behalf of the center. Congratulations. Greetings from India. I am Dr. M.K. Sharma. I am the chief scientist and the scientist in charge, heading Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute in Kurja. Kurja is in the northern region of India and it is the largest ceramic cluster of India and as well as we can say that it is one of the top 10 ceramic tableware clusters of the world. As far as we see its history, Kurja is almost 600 years old cluster. Okay, now this is uh, because it is having almost 500 plus small scale ceramic manufacturing units in which all uh, ceramic tablewares, exterior decoration wall tiles, that porcelain insulators, all such kind of some uh, handicraft items, hardwares, that turkey blue art pottery is there, all such kind of industries together, all together are almost 500 units. And uh, so, and uh, this is having almost, uh, we can say, 300 plus, 300 plus continuous kilns which are in operation on uh, diesel oil. As on now, 50% of the kilns are on uh, uh, LNG, liquidified natural gas. So we had lot of scope to work on uh, environmental issues like energy efficiency of the internal kilns. So we could reduce, we, when we started working, we could reduce the dead mass usage, you can say, from 6 kg to almost 2 kgs. We reduced dead mass of the tunnel kilns, trolleys on which we send the wares inside the kilns. That we could, dead mass of the trolley base we could reduce from 40 to 50 percent. We could reduce the flue gases wastage emissions by 20 percent. We developed all means fast firing some formulations through which we can increase the output of the wares by 10%. We could make cluster environment better and better by reduction in diesel fuel consumption. Thereby, all this together we could reduce almost carbon dioxide dumping to the environment we could reduce by 482 metric tons per annum. In addition to all these above, we did some materials development, some kiln furniture developments. The development of energy efficient materials if we talk, we developed ultra low density refractory granules for to reduce the dead mass of the kiln car trolleys. And that, that uh, the density of that, per density of that uh, uh, ultra, ultra low density refractory granules was 0.65 grams per cc, which is less than that uh, ceramic fiber which was in use earlier. So that, that helped us, that helped us to reduce the, uh, this uh, kill car base dead mass weight by almost 40 percent. So that also helped us. We developed another this thing high strength low thermal mass kill furniture through which we could reduce the uh, thickness of the, uh, the kill furniture tiles on which we load the wares. So that, al that also helped us to reduce the dead mass in this kill cars. Kill cars. So all these together Boost, boosted, it helped us to boost the air quality better and better 
by further reducing diesel consumption. <coughs> if suppose we see all this has a big impact on air quality in reducing the SPM level, RSPM level, carbon dioxide level, and NOx level, and it, if we count in that in percentage terms, it reduced by 30 percent. We did work on waste minimization circles. We worked on quality circles for this to improve the efficiency of the cluster. We implemented 5S techniques and the risk analysis also were diagnosed. And we, in developing the cluster, all the ways, all rounds, we worked. Now we have started working on head of work on uh, in the cluster we are deeply analyzing the risk risk in the process and this will help us now with these words we are uh, really extremely happy that we are selected for the corporate environment achievement award by the committee of american of the american ceramic society i am very much thankful to recognize our initiatives and efforts by Corporate Environment Achievement Award Committee Chairperson as well as members of course. Thanks a lot for giving me a chance for speaking and with this I am done and trust that all of you to stay safe and keep every, everyone safe in this pandemic situation. Bye. Thank you very much. The Corporate Technical Achievement Award recognizes an outstanding technical achievement in ceramics made by an American Ceramic Society corporate partner. This year, Corning Incorporated receives the award. Dr. Royshal Ingram Uganwumi and Lutz Kircher are accepting the award on Corning Environmental Technologies' behalf. Mr. Oji, Board of Directors, and others tuning into this ceremony today, we are honored to accept the 2020 Technical Achievement Award from the American Ceramic Society. I am accepting this award with my colleague, Dr. Rochelle Ingram Ogunabumi, today on behalf of a global Corning team that has been critical to the introduction of this product to the automotive market. It takes literally hundreds, even thousands of our employees to research, develop, commercialize, and mass produce these filters. Corning has an extensive commitment to ceramic science. Ceramic science is one of the three core technologies Corning specializes in, along with glass science and optical physics. We have become a leader in low expansion and poor ceramics. Corning Environmental Technologies has been at the forefront of emissions control technologies for almost five decades. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the US Clean Air Act, which initiated the need for catalytic, catalytic converters. As a result, we pioneered the cellular ceramic substrates by 1974 that has helped automakers meet the new standards. And just a few years later, Corning scientists also developed the first cellular ceramic wall flow particulate filter, which can capture up to 99% of soot particulates from diesel emissions. Since their introduction, ceramic emissions control products have had a tremendous impact on air quality here in the United States and around the globe. Our products sit at the heart of catalytic converters and emissions control systems of cars all around the world, and they help to make the air we breathe cleaner every day. Corning's Duratrap GC gasoline particulate filters mark an exciting new chapter in Corning's history of global clean air initiatives. And what is most exciting is that these products enable a generation of gasoline and gasoline hybrid cars that are nearly particulate emissions free at the tailpipe. That has huge potential for positive impact on air quality as the world transitions to electrified powertrains. In the 2000s, 
we realized that fine particulates would be the next frontier in emissions reduction. Our engineers adapted the proven design of a diesel particulate filter and modified the microstructure to fit the unique environment of the gasoline engine. This resulted in the launch of Corning Duratrap GC filters in 2016. Today, in many countries, emissions control systems on gasoline vehicles focus on reducing gasoline pollutants with a catalytic converter. But with new regulations being introduced in Europe and China, automakers are faced with stricter emissions limits which also ask for a reduction of fine particulate emissions. Our gasoline particulate filters feature a new cordyrite-based material composition with a ceramic microstructure. The ceramic and process science, as well as engineering innovations involved, enabled this unique microstructure to trap fine particulates before they reach the tailpipe, while at the same time maintaining engine performance. This ultimately helps automakers introduce gasoline vehicles to the European and Chinese market, which meet emissions regulations and are much cleaner. We are very proud of Corning's contribution to a better air quality. And so we say once again, thank you to the American Ceramic Society for your commitment to ceramic science and engineering, and for putting our particulate filters and their impact, which is otherwise hidden in today's spotlight. The Rishi Raj Medal for Innovation and Commercialization Award is awarded annually to recognize one individual whose innovation lies at the cusp of commercialization in a field related at least in part, to ceramics and glass. The award was generously established this year by Dr. Rishi Raj, whose research career has concentrated on the unusual properties and nanostructure of polymer-derived ceramics, and more recently, on the influence of electric fields on defect phenomena in ceramics at high temperature. We are pleased to present the first Rishi Raj medal to Dr. George Beale. Well, I'm certainly honored to accept the Rishi Raj Medal for Innovation and Commercialization in Ceramics. I knew Rishi when he was a young professor at Cornell and helped us at Corning in understanding creep resistance in glass ceramics. My first experience with the American Ceramic Society was when I was a graduate student at MIT in geology and we took a course at Harvard from the eminent mineralogist James B. Thompson on igneous rocks and their formation. And then we were surprised at the first lecture that the textbook was Phase Diagrams for Ceramics by the American Ceramic Society. And of course, as I went on to a career at Corning, I used these books, which you can see down here, for some of them fairly dog-eared, uh, to help me. It's a really useful tool in ceramics as well as in geology. I would also like to thank the Ceramic Society for being the co-publisher of the book, Glass Ceramic Technology by Wolfram Holland and me which is in its third edition. Now, as far as challenges are concerned in my career, obviously it's long, so I had a few, but the most important I think was in 1995, when Corning exited the consumer products uh, area, sold the division. Now, we produced more, many glass ceramic products in the consumer area, like cookware, dinnerware, and the stovetop material. But it was then a challenge to try to find applications for glass ceramics 
in uh, the newer technical areas that Corning was into. Well, there were many failures along the way. We tried to make memory disk substrates. We tried to make substrates for uh, silicon for photovoltaics. And we even made transparent fibers with uh, high band with luminescence for amplifiers. But none of these worked out until about 10 years ago when we started working on making glass ceramics feasible for mobile phone housings. And this became a successful product. And more recently, as you may have heard, we have developed a transparent glass ceramic for the faceplate of these mobile phones. The advantage of glass ceramics over strengthened glass is in the fracture toughness, which improves the resistance to impact. Of course, at my age, it's very important to work with younger and smarter scientists. And I've been fortunate to be able to do that. Of course, experience does play a role. Now, in terms of the Rishi Raj medal, I can remember a conversation have with, I had with my mentor and uh, good friend, Don Stupi, who I'm sure you've, you've heard of. He told me that it's important if you can make a link between your basic research to eventual products and particularly the creation of jobs, that would be the most satisfying thing that uh, an industrial researcher can achieve. And I think the Rishi Raj medal uh, sort of portrays this particular idea. Finally, I would like to thank Corning Incorporated for their encouragement and allowing me to work for 58 years here at the lab. And uh, I would also like to uh, thank my wife, Sonia, who did so many things for me over the years support in support of me. Thank you. The Medal for Leadership in the Advancement of Ceramic Technology recognizes two individuals each year, one from the Americas and one from outside the Americas, who through leadership and vision in an executive role have made substantial contributions to the success of their organization and in turn have significantly expanded the frontiers of the ceramic industry. This year's recipients are Dr. Long Zhang and Dr. Scott Swartz. Hello everyone, thanks to the American Slim Associate to grant me the 2020 Medal for Leadership in the Advancement of Ceramic Technology. It's a great honor to me and I was also very glad to have this opportunity to express my feelings via this video. I am Long Zhang from Shanghai Institute of Optics and Biomechanics, Chinese Academic Science. I have been engaged in the research world on glass and transparent cells for optical and laser applications. First of all, my career growth was highly relevant to the American CLM Associate. Since I was a graduate student many years ago, the Journal of American Cinema Associates have been the one of the best journals I like to read, publish, and lively. I still deeply remember that I ever argued many, many times almost the whole year with the journal ad and reviewer for one of my doctoral research works submitted to the journal. Moreover, I have been benefited so much for each meeting from the Associate. I was also invited by the Associate Annual Meeting several times as an invited report. Through such international scientific and technological communication related to the associate, I got acquainted with many associate friends and developed good cooperations with many institutes and companies such as Corning, Offaly University, and Arena University. Thanks to the associate, makes me good acquaintance of the so lot of American citizens' friends. In my career, I have encountered many difficult and challenges, 
I once had a serious illness when I was a doctoral student, which makes me much hated for a long time. Whether or not I should con- continue to engage in the scientific research, I would like to thank Professor He Wang Hu, the supervisor of my PhD, to give me a warm-hearted support and patience, re-inspiring my love and passion to the scientific research. I would also like to thank Professor Helmut Eck, the advisor of my postdoc in Munich University, Germany. In those five years, Helmut always offered me a very free environment for research, appreciate and recognize my innovation idea. I, we often have in-depth scientific discussion, which makes me full of motivations in scientific research. Promoting to the industrialization of technology is that I pay great attention in past ten years. Some many types of new optical and laser materials with excellent properties were developed and high price synthesis. Granted to the new material award of Chinese International Industry Fair, those developed new ceramic materials were widely applied in some major scientific facilities and high technology industry. Aiming to the serious situation, that the research from the Chinese University and the National Institute were generally hard to apply in the industry. I, together with Sibin Jiang, start to establish the Industry Research Institute. The Hangzhou Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics as the incubators of the industry technology on ceramics. This year, the Hangzhou Institute of Fine and Optical Mechanics were awarded the most influential new IND institutions in Zhejiang Province. Sibin, many many thanks for your great encouragement and effective suggestion. Finally, I would like to thank the American Ceramics Society again. To award me this honor, wish all of us health, happiness, and good luck. Well, greetings all. I hope everyone is staying safe in these challenging times.、Uh, excuse my、uh, COVID haircut, but、uh, it is what it is. I'm truly honored and humbled for this award. It's extremely gratifying. My contributions to the ceramic、uh, field are considered worthy of the honor. This has made me look back, and、uh, I recognize how fortunate I've been. You know, I was lucky to grow up with my parents keeping me grounded. Well, sort of for those of no, of those of you who knew me when I was、uh, younger. My dad provided an example of how strong work ethic can lead to success as a technologist and an entrepreneur. Growing up in the '70s, I was lucky to always have a summer job in my dad's company. This is great,、uh, although I had to work harder than most simply to get accepted by my peers there. I was lucky to attend Alfred University for my BS in ceramic engineering, and then to be steered by my advisor Bob Snyder to attend Penn State for my graduate work. I was also lucky to study under three icons in the field of ceramics: Eric Cross, Bob Newnham, and Rustam Roy, and to work in Penn State's Ferro Electrics Group, one of the most prolific electronic ceramic R&D groups of that era, and it still is. I was fortunate that my advisor Eric Cross tolerated my tendency to work on multiple different projects at the same time while I was there. Uh, this actually extended my time there, but it broadened me as a scientist.、Uh, while I was at Penn State, I overlapped with several current icons in our field, including Tom Shrout, Clive Randall, and Susan McKinstry, and two other scientists also being honored by the Ceramic Society,、uh, along with myself, Jim Adair and Dick Brow.、Uh, Tom Shrout was my mentor, collaborator, and a close friend. I'll always be grateful to him. I was fortunate to begin my professional career at Battelle Memorial Institute, where I continued working in electronic ceramics and learned how to write proposals and to manage projects. At Battelle, I worked closely with Bill Dawson. Bill and I co-founded Next Next Tech Materials,、uh, now called Nexeris, in 1994. We focused our business in the field of solid oxide fuel cells and related applications. Of course, I had to reinvent myself to become an expert in a new field, but my background made this possible. With a combination of hard work and perhaps a little luck along the way, Nexeris is now one of the leading innovators in the energy and environmental ceramics field. I'm extremely proud of what Nexeris has become, and it's really been a joy to watch. And I'd like to say guide our team members as they grew from young engineers into company leaders.、Uh, Nexeris recently celebrated its 25th year, and we now have more than 50 employees. We continue to work in solid oxide fuel cells, but we have broadened our scope to elect. To electrolysis sensors, catalysts, and batteries. Bill is since retired, and we have new leadership in the company. 
uh, and uh, I think we have an extremely bright future. Finally, my biggest fortune happened 32 years ago when I met my wife, Ruth Ann. At the time I met her, she was extremely accomplished in her medical career, more so than I was, that's for sure. Ruth Ann pushed me to strive for excellence and always tolerated my workaholic tendencies. Thanks to the American Ceramic Society for this award and to all of those who helped me along the way. Thank you.